Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a near enough crayfish. Um, I believe this pattern was done by a number of folks, but I think Dave Whitlock might be the most famous person. He may have been the originator. Um, but the idea here is let's build a crayfish that is um, good enough to fool the fish, but not so labor intensive that we're afraid to lose one. The hook that I'm using is a Mustad streamer hook. It's size 4 and 4x long, 2x heavy. Um, target species is smallmouth bass, but this will work well for um, largemouth bass and pretty much anything they'll chase a crayfish around. Some of the uh, components of today's fly are pheasant feathers we can use for claws and whiskers. I'm also adding rubber whiskers, a piece of crystal flash, and here I'm going to use a short piece of round rubber for eyes. The little stubs are easier to tie in and I don't think we have to go to the trouble of beads and extensions and, and more realistic looking eyes. So we're getting our hook in the vise and we'll get started. I'm going to use a copper colored Danville uh, 140 denier thread for this fly. Um, think heavy thread here. We're going to spin, sort of spin a little deer hair at the end and um, everything about this is uh, we want it to be somewhat rugged because bass are going to chew on this thing. So I'm getting my thread started. I like to go halfway between the eye and the hook point and then about halfway back. It's a little trick I saw folks use and it kind of helps um, make uh, it easy to consistently place the eyes. I don't think I had this in the materials list up front, but um, we're going to tie in a couple of dumbbell eyes here to add some weight and flip this hook over if we can. So I'm using some cross wraps and eventually a, a wrap underneath or two. And I think I've learned, well, it works for me anyways, but I'll do a series of cross wraps. So maybe a set of five in each direction, then a few wraps around the base to tighten things up staying above the hook and then do it again so about two or three times of that seems to work about as well as anything to hold the hook for me another point here is we want to make sure we cover enough of the hook shank and then we want to glue that so that that tension or friction against the hook shank is extended across more of the hook and then when we glue it it kind of all acts as one piece and it keeps them from flipping around I think I've mentioned before, it drives me crazy when those eyes flip around, but it really doesn't seem to hurt the way this fish is. You can spin them back and cast again, as long as they're not too loose. So we'll put a little crazy glue on the base here, thread base. Hit our thread wraps, flip it over and finish things up. And I'm kind of going slow here and talking about this, but um, when you're, if you lay your materials out and you um, work methodically through this, these flies are you know, maybe a six or seven minute fly for a slow tire. So it's not quite a guide fly, but, but if you lose one, it's not the end of the world. So here I move back to the hook point or in front of the hook point, and I'm just going to take a wrap and tie each one of these rubber um, legs, I guess they're antennas in this case, um, to the top of the hook. So I have a whole rubber leg and then this one's cut in half. So I have two short ones and two long ones when I'm done. So now that they're tied in, we'll stretch them back, wrap over them, kind of hold them down and in place and finish up somewhere around where the barb is. And we'll move back up and we'll add in our piece of crystal flash. So same deal, it's one strand of crystal flash. Um, I don't know if that's an aiming point for the fish or if it um, helps get their attention, but uh, kind of just feels um, like it adds something. Okay, so with everything clipped down and out of the way, we're going to add in another one of those um, pheasant feathers. You can see this one is, it, it, as long as it's mottled or, or gold, or I guess I should have mentioned this at some point, um, you're going to want to match the color of the crayfish in the creek that you're fishing. But 
Uh, in this case, we're going for something with a little orange, uh, kind of tan, a little brown. Here we do some cross wraps and get that feather tied in. I probably made that look harder than it typically is. But we'll grab the tip and wrap it around. That little delay there was me deciding which hackle pliers to use. That's half the fun. When you get all these tools and you get to monkey with them and see what works best for certain things. But um, I don't know. To me, that's, that's kind of part of the fun of uh, building your own flies. So we're at about three wraps. Tie this thing off with a couple of cross wraps. And cut off the waist. You see, I really didn't get any of those. There are too many of those black tips in, in this. I'm not sure how much they would have added anyways. But um, I think when I picked that feather, I had that in mind. And we'll just pull everything back and wrap over it a little bit to get it all facing toward the back of the hook, but what will be the front of the crayfish. Okay, now another thing that I don't think I caught or took a picture of at the beginning of this, but um, we're going to just use some rabbit fur. I blended about equal parts of orange and brown. And <clears throat> this is probably a good time to mention that uh, this fly could be weighted as well. We could have uh, wrapped in a nice thick lead wire or lead wire substitute across the shank of the hook as well. Um, but I think that's one of the challenges is when you're trying to build a crayfish everybody wants to build a a big bulky crayfish you know more like the real thing and I don't think the fish care if it moves like a crayfish and kind of looks uh, you know remotely similar I think they eat first and ask questions later especially the uh, smallmouth bass so we covered up the uh, work that we had done so far with some dubbing and that'll help kind of spread those little black stubs that I'm going to call eyes. Um, so we got those tied in similar to the other rubber legs and um, go back to dubbing. So we're going to add a layer of dubbing, kind of cover the butts of these up. Um, but it's also going to be a pad. It's making this a little bigger. So we don't want our crayfish to be too thin. And it's also going to be kind of a, a landing pad for the, um, the claws that we're going to tie in as, as soon as we uh, snip these legs or these eyes off. So I leave about a quarter inch. Like I said, I'm not really trying to imitate eyes perfectly, but it's a different color, some kind of contrast. And uh, again, the fish, um, they don't seem to care. So add another little bit of dubbing, get everything pointed in the right direction and the old dog leg. We'll stop and fix that. And then park our thread where we want to tie in those those two feathers that we're going to use for claws. So here again, I I don't know a little bit of um, these are right from the like the shoulder part of a pheasant skin. They have a, a couple different colors, uh, some banding, a little bit of a contrast there, and they're nice and short and stiff and curly, and they'll stick out each side, so they kind of lend themselves to. Uh, being claws on a crayfish. So here I'm tying down the butts and you can jostle the, again this is for the camera, and I don't think that matters that those could point out at different angles and uh, it would fish just fine. 
So I brought my thread forward to just behind the dumbbell eyes. And I'm going to tie in the saddle hackle that is going to represent legs, give this thing a little body, and hopefully make a little commotion in the water as we kind of jerk it along the bottom. So we'll get that kind of positioned with a couple of cross wraps and start wrapping back. It was just a coincidence that that stub of that feather wraps back right to the end of the other feather, but um, it kind of fills things in. And then we'll go back to dubbing and and build kind of a nice thick body. And, and what I'm doing here, this is probably like, <clears throat> all flies are kind of like something else, right? So this section of this fly is probably most like tying a woolly bugger at least with the method that I think I prefer, and that's to tie the feather in the front to wrap back and then use a ribbing material. In this case, we're going to use the tying thread to cross wrap and hold down the uh, the palmered hackle when it's, when it's on the back. So getting a little ahead of myself describing what I'm going to do, and uh, mostly because watching somebody do dubbing is boring and uh, repetitive. So... I guess we already talked about this could be in whatever color you want to make it. I think red eyes add something to these things. The yellow eyes are what I kind of had on hand. Um, the other thing to note here is a smaller version of this is a gray trout fly. And if you have a stream where I know here in Pennsylvania, there's a lot of talk about um, folks doing really well on crayfish patterns in the little Juniata. So uh, I think if you did a little smaller pattern, maybe... This is an eight. It's it's kind of in between. So large trout, small smallmouth bass, but um, I I'd, I'd be inclined to go smaller. I I think the trout are um, not all trout that I'm after are 26 inches long and eat um, two inch long crayfish or three inch long crayfish. So I uh, maybe should have said that better. Hey, I am after those, but they're not always. They're not always in there, so. All right, so we'll get back here and kind of finish up. There's a little carrot shape to the to the body, which doesn't hurt. And I'll park the thread there right at the hook point. And wrap the hackle. So this is a long saddle. I'm not going to use hackle pliers, especially when I'm trying to work all this in between me and the camera and the hook. And so, and I apologize for the way that the camera kind of zooms in and out. Um, I have it on autofocus. And it, there's no studio here. It's just me and a, a cell phone camera and a love of fly tying. So fly fishing and fly tying. So here we are. we got a couple of wraps in the back to hold the tip down. And cross wrapping forward. And you could use wire if you think your fly needs a little more flash. Um, it's another piece of material and takes a little longer. Again, trying to be near enough. Um, you could tie in a piece of something for a carpace, uh, the shell of the, the crayfish. The, you, know, you could probably build this into a more realistic pattern. But uh, Again, these we're dragging these along the bottom. We're catching uh, smallmouth bass, which aren't very picky. Sometimes they seem so, but usually aren't. So here we're going to do a little more dubbing. We're almost done. There's just a couple of steps left. And um, we're going to fill in around those dumbbell eyes. So a few wraps behind. Some cross wrap, crisscross wraps there. And this... Um, size eight with this amount of weight and a smallmouth bass depends on the size of the river but this does really well on a um a six weight bank robber that i use nine foot uh fly rod and uh but i've thrown it with a, a five weight and i've thrown it with my eight weight when we're trying to get across a big stretch of water so here we have everything pretty well filled in 
put a couple of wraps there to hold things in place and then essentially there's just one more material that we're going to tie in and uh, it's a little clump of deer hair so I, I caught some footage of me cleaning the deer hair it went in the stacker um, if we want to talk pencils that's probably a pencil width of deer hair um, I'm trying to represent I think the folded tail of a uh, crayfish as they're swimming again backwards right so their tail folds underneath um, so that stuff should uh, stick prominently above the the dumbbell eyes and then you'll see as I finish this a lot of times and this one worked out well and it depends on the hair you have but um, you want to keep the tips of the hair up and between the dumbbell eyes but it's okay to let the rest of it kind of wrap around the hook a little bit as you move forward and get get to behind the hook eye and if that works as planned you can just trim that put in a couple of whip finishes and call it done if that doesn't truly fill everything in sometimes I just trim those butts off real short and I put a little dubbing uh, doing our little section of dubbing there in front before I whip finish so that's why you see the thread still hanging there if I was confident that that would have been filled in all the way around I probably could have looked closer and guessed but um, I would have cut the thread off already Then there's always the oops, I cut the thread off anyways, but uh, I didn't do that while we're making this fly. So All right, so there were, I had about three cups of coffee before I did this, and my hands are sufficiently shaky enough to prove that I should never try any type of surgery. And we'll trim it off close to the bottom, which is actually the top if things work out. Get that last bundle off the top there. And just see how things went. And in the process, some of that hair usually gets pushed around the far side. So we'll do a second whip finish here. Kind of finish off that little spot behind the eye of the hook those hooks always have a little sharp edge there and they're kind of always still open a little bit so filling that in with threads is not a bad idea so I'll snip off a few of those wayward hairs that got pushed around the far side make sure that my eyes show couple strays on this side as well and that's about it for that part so um, obviously with these flies you drag along the bottom uh, some head cement in the right places is a good idea um, UV glue maybe if you want in this case this is Sally Hansen's hard as nails So get a good coat. Sometimes I soak that in there pretty good. Then we'll spin it and give you a quick look at everything. And it's nothing too pretty or too fancy, but uh, it'll fish. Now I'll trim those longer of the uh, tentacles, legs, whatever you want to call them. Trim those to about a hook length trim the crystal flash to a little longer than that and uh, that's a finished fly like I said it probably would take about half this time or less for um, somebody who is uh, being deliberate about trying to crank these out and change colors change sizes and go fish thanks for watching if you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon.com.